Howdy folks, this is Justro at Metcalf Mills. I'm glad you could stop by today. In this video, we're gonna be dressing stones on a New South corn mill. Now, New South was one of the less popular mill builders in the early 1900s. I'll have some more on their history later in this video. This will be a two-parter because of the length of the process. I cut out as much as I could without cutting you short on having a good understanding of what I was involved in dressing stones on a vertical stone mill. Let's get to work. We've got a little New South 22 inch corn mill here. We're gonna address the stones and this thing originally, it's got a fan that goes here with a pipe that comes around and goes in right here to blow a current of air across the grain as it falls down from the hopper right here. Down through here, it blows a current of air over here and comes out right here. And this thing didn't have a fan on it, but I had a spare fan off of a mill that had that got some rot damage inside that I'm gonna part out. So it worked out good to this feller had a set of millstones and an old frame right here. And he brought them just to trade on. And he would trade me these stones and this metal for uh, the fan if I would put it on here. So it worked out okay. So I'm going to dress the stones on this mill and put that fan on it. And this mill is, it's a, like I said, it's a new south, but it's got something here that I've never seen before. This little logo right here is a pile of ear corn. It's faded out quite a bit, but you can still tell what it is. I've never seen that before on a mill. A pile of ear corn and the little decorative marks, but we're gonna get her dressed, get it working. As far as the stone dressing goes, we can't do anything now until these two faces dry. If they're not dry when you put it together and bump the stones, it's just gonna smear. It's not gonna wear off the, and show us the high spots. I noticed on this top bolt on this side, they didn't cut the threads, but about a half an inch up through here. It's not enough thread to tighten the case up like it needs to be. Even if you put spacers on, you still wouldn't have room just barely for the nut. So I'm gonna take this in here and cut the threads farther down so that we can tighten this thing up like it's supposed to be. Thank you. 
And the dial we're going to use is going to be a half inch by 13. Tighten it up here. old thread was down to right here so this is all new thread we have the same problem on this side it felt like a Same problem, threads bottomed out. So we'll take it in here and cut some new threads on it like we did the other side. About another three quarters of an inch new threads. That ought to do the trick. Oh yeah, that's way better. You can see right here, the only contact we got on this runner stone is right around the outside edge. It's kind of what I figured the way it looked. Over here on the bed stone, the only contact we've got is just right here next to the spout. It's not touching it anywhere else. So this is our high spot, that's where it's hitting. And you heard that knocking sound. 
You can see right here on the steel band where it's chewed up, that steel band is digging into the concrete right here. So what we'll have to do is heat this steel band a little bit with a torch and peck, peck it back about a quarter inch probably, get it back off of the face of that stone so that it's not rubbing. This whole assembly, <clears throat> the drop where the grain falls down in the mill and where the air current blows across, all this assembly is pretty much one piece. It's kind of put together this section and this piece. This is where the trash off of the shoe that separates out on the shoe falls down and goes out these pipes and falls down there instead of blowing all over the place. New South is the only mill that had this design. There's just two screws that holds all this, this cast iron on this mill. Just two screws, and I'll show you how that is possible. Two screws in the top right here, and this picks up out of the bearing housing. And the drop where the grain falls down in, this square part goes down inside of the part on the bearing down into the auger for the shaft. See right here, that's the only spot where the stones are touching when the thing's running. It's the only spot. So what that means is we got to take this down, and that'll let the stones get a little bit closer, paint it, put it back together, run it, take it apart again, and see what we've got. And we keep doing that until we get the face of both of these stones trued up, true to each other. And on the runner stone, you can see the only contact we had was just right around the outside edge. This outside edge was touching that upper corner on the bed stone. That's the only contact we had. That's a result of just continuing to run this mill and grind grain without dressing these stones, without maintaining them. Just wear. This little bench I built when I was 14 years old. Another thing about the first spot that shows up when you run the stones and let them touch, the first spot that shows up, you're gonna have to take that spot down the farthest because it's the highest. You keep dressing and you just keep taking that same spot as well as everything else that shows up until you get the two faces exactly true to each other.
Now we just let it dry. Now you can see how much contact we've got now right in this area a little bit on the outer edge that's because i use the coarse side of the hammer the bush hammer to take down quite a bit on that outside edge because i knew it would take quite a bit to start getting them true and then on your bed stone you see we got a lot more contact than we had the first time it was only these four lands right here that had contact now we've got contact going farther around on both sides so we're going to focus on taking these high spots down quite a bit you have to be real careful you can take them down too much and then you have to do a lot of dressing to correct that so this is where experience helps you out as far as knowing how much how hard to peck with the hammer and how much to take it down so you don't overdo it. Time to get back to pecking.
on the runner stone, we got contact all over the stone. And on the bed stone, we got a lot more contact down on the bottom side and then over on the other side. Looks like it's starting to get contact through the middle over there. I don't know how good you can see it on here now. So we're getting contact up here at the top, all down at the bottom some, and a little bit over there, right through on those lands there, you can see it's starting to touch. roosters with an umbrella. Something else in there. Something else. all the time. So you can see how it's slowly going around all the way the whole
now you can see we started out up here if you remember we've got contact all the way around the surface of the bedstone in some spot so now i'll start fine dressing in these high spots just the high spots and get it down to where it's all the surface is touching and you can see on the runner stone we got good contact all the way around it just needs to be fine-tuned and took down till it's all even a few more times maybe we'll have it We will finish this job in the next video, which will be coming out later this weekend. We'll also meet and speak to the man that owns it about what his plans are in the future for this particular grain mill. Now how I do things here at the shop, you know I do restoration work, I make some parts, I'm working on the new grain mills. When I get service work in, that supersedes anything else because these folks depend on their grain mill and they need to get it back in business as soon as possible. So when service work comes in, it takes top priority. I hope you're enjoying learning about what's involved in the millwright's trade. Thank you for watching.